Okay, here is a quick demo on cleaning up oil-based ink. Um, what you might need is vegetable oil, some kind of degreaser, maybe like a simple green or 409 or uh, even maybe Windex at the end. If you are outdoors, oil-based ink cleans up using solvents, but I would never use something like paint thinner indoors. I would only use that outside. Usually what I do if I have a variety of brayers and kind of these guys, I often have like leftover newsprint from like printing earlier. Uh, maybe you use this between your plate and print and the press or just for test proofs, things that you don't think you'll need. What is common in a lot of shops is um, old phone book paper. It's a great place to just set down old ink. So I had a little bit of uh, leftover ink. I'm going to save that. And I usually take that and I put it right in the center of um, like a piece of tin foil. Maybe I'll take some of that too. And I usually fold it in half right where there is the ink. Spread that out from there, making sure that there's no like air pockets right next to the ink. And just fold it so that no air gets to it. And using a Sharpie, I will write down what kind of ink that is, the date, if I added anything, if there are any modifiers to my ink, and whatever color it is. All right. So usually the first thing I do is get up the extra ink that's sitting out. You might have to do this a couple times. First I'll use these guys, your palette knives. And just put it there. Scrape, scrape, scrape. So we really, kind of like an oil painting with oil brushes, you kind of want to just remove as much of the oil-based ink off as possible before you even touch it with any of the cleaning supplies. If we just go at this with vegetable oil, all of that ink is just going to spread and it's going to take three times as long to clean up. Now at this point, what I often do is roll out the remainder of the ink on the brayers, like any of the extra. On my palette, if I have a glass palette, or if you have the paper, you can also just roll it, if you have old newspaper, roll in and out on some newspaper to lift off all the extra ink. Don't forget the sides. And that lifts up not everything, but it lifts up a lot of the ink so that you can go to ink that up later. I think what's easiest is to use is a razor blade, one of the safety with the safety holders. And sometimes I'll gently just kind of scrape up the ink on a palette knife. And then I will go forth. And as soon as I, s and I'll kind of use the razor blade on, if you, this is only, you can only use razor blades if you have a glass palette. If you're just using like old, um, or if you're using like something disposable, just, you could just throw the, all this out. Um, but if you're trying to not, you know, uh, be as wasteful making your own reusable palette is a great idea okay so that didn't get up everything but that got a lot of ink maybe just make one more one more check you might notice that I always kind of store my brayers with the base on the ground or with the style like this with the little kickstand. 
on the bottom so that I don't risk damaging or flattening my roller in any spot. Now, usually I go ahead and just use regular vegetable oil from a can. I can't find that at the moment, so I'm using a little bit of Pam, which is probably not as cost efficient, but I'm also just trying to use what I have available to me at this second. Cleaning razor blades off, you want to be very careful. I'm also going to show you how to do this with only three sheets of paper towels. I teach in a classroom where I have 15 to 20 students and the most common thing I see if, is even if I go through this demo with people, people will still use like 15 sheets of paper towels and that's really wasteful. Ideally we'd have a rag service but I always encourage people to use paper towels until it's completely black. So you see that I took the roller, I kind of just like spread it in some of the oil, I turn it sideways, and I wipe up. Of course it spins around, so sometimes you can kind of brace it with your thumb. And you want to clean it until Nothing else is coming off if you touch it with your bare hands. I mean it, especially if you these are if you are in a print shop and people are going to be coming in to use these right after you, you want to do the courtesy to the others in the shop of cleaning things until it's so clean that someone could come in and print white without picking up residue. I know a lot of times the end of class is a, uh, rushed, so I would say judge your time wisely. Okay, you want to make it look like it's as close to new as possible. This was the first time I used this particular brayer. So then you can kind of test out. You always want to make sure to also get the very sides, the side rims of this. One thing I was also always taught is that if you happen to have French chalk or baby powder, you might just put a little bit of that on your brayers right after and that'll help absorb any additional oil. So as you can see, there's still stuff coming off the brayer. You just want to get it to the point where nothing else, it's like when you wipe it, it wipes off clean. Now, if your hands themselves are completely inky, sometimes this little last bit is one of the last bits to clean up. Right there. So with these, I just kind of, I'll go back to the dirtiest area. With these um, palette knives, you want to make sure that you get all the edges. See that? That's coming from that edge. You want to make sure you get that too. And make sure you also get the handles. Because sometimes, especially with ones that have black handles like this, you can't see it. And it starts to build up over time. Yeah, so you always want to make sure you get that, you want to get the, those ends too. I will admit sometimes it takes a little longer to clean up with the vegetable oil, but it's much safer and not toxic for you. You always want to make sure to get those sides as well. careful if you are using something like Pam to make sure that you're not anywhere near a flammable source. I know some print shops they might have etching inks or cleanup area near what's called a hot plate for etching. So you just want to make sure that you do not spray any of this stuff near heat. Just like in cooking. So I have some other things I'll follow up with for this. You also want to make sure to get the handles. And with this, go ahead and take like your really inky part of your paper towel, start there, and work your way. If you have big little bits of it, just kind of take a little bit more time with that.
So I just keep folding my paper towel to gradually more and more cleaner spots. Go over all of this. Make sure if you do have like a taped down palette of some kind that you're getting those edges as well. 